As a disclaimer to start this video, this is going to have to be a series due to school being rather overwhelming at the moment, with finals looming. Sorry about not being able to condense things down into one video like I usually do, but I also want to start doing longer, more detailed videos, so for the time being, this is going to have to be the compromise I have to make. Anyway, let's get into the video. KMS Grash Bay was a panzer ship constructed by the German Navy in the interwar period to replace the outdated pre-dreadnoughts in accordance to the restrictions placed on them by the Treaty of Versailles. To get a more detailed description of the Deutschland class, please go watch my video on Germany's pocket battleships. But you do need to know each ship of the class varied, to which the Grash Bay was a bit heavier than the other ships of this class, at around 16,000 tons full load. And the ship's anti-aircraft armament was upgraded with six 4.1-inch or 105mm guns, four 37mm guns, and ten 20mm guns. Grash Bay would also carry the first German shipborne radar set. But the Grash Bay would also carry the usual six 11-inch or 280mm guns and triple turrets, as well as the eight 5.9-inch or 150mm guns and the two quad torpedo tubes in the rear of the ship. Grash Bay would also be quite fast at around 28 knots. The Admiral Grash Bay would be laid down in October of 1932, launched in June of 1934, and commissioned in January of 1936. To briefly summarize the Admiral Grash Bay's interwar career, the ship would participate in non-intervention patrols off the coast of Spain as the Spanish Civil War was going on, doing five of them in this period. The ship would also participate in the coronation review of George VI, as well as German fleet reviews, along with fleet maneuvers and goodwill visits to other nations. Now, as many of you know, the Admiral Grash Bay would participate in commerce raiding missions in the Atlantic for its wartime service, but I feel that's important to detail exactly what the purpose of commerce raiding is. For this part, I will be taking from Dudley Pope's The Battle of the River Plate. There are two main objectives of commerce warfare, the destruction of enemy ships and disorganizing the sailing of merchant ships. Those restrictions on the enemy seagoing trade become unbearable and finally impossible. A surface raider like the Grash Bay can help to meet those objectives in three ways. 1. Sinking or capturing ships. 2. Dislocating normal traffic through the fear of the ship's presence, thus slowing up regular arrival of food, supplies, and raw materials. This eventually cuts down on imports, so much so that the blockaded country collapses economically. 3. By making scattering the enemy surface warships hunting for the raiders, that other arms like submarines and aircraft, for example, have a better chance of successfully attacking convoys whose escorts, both close escorts and more remote patrols by larger ships, have been weakened. During the spring of 1939, with planning for the invasion of Poland going on, the Kriegsmarine began drawing up plans for commerce raiding in the Atlantic, to which Admiral Erich Raider, the head of the German Navy, would look back on the surface raiders of the First World War, drawing the conclusion that the ships used during that time were simply not suited for the task. However, with the characteristics of the Panzer ship, he believed that they would be up to the task, which would involve the Admiral Graf Spee and the Deutschland, later changed to Lützow, which would include moving vast distances at a time to avoid being caught by enemy ships. For instance, in a week's time, the ship could easily travel the distance between London and New York. As well as for operating the cruisers at sea for long periods of time, the Germans' plan would use auxiliary vessels, specially designed for fueling, supplying, and prison ship duties. They would be disguised as neutral tankers and cruise in the general area of the raiders, where they would rendezvous when needed. Grash Bay's orders for wartime would be, quote, the disruption and destruction of enemy shipping by all possible means, end quote, by which, on the 21st of August, the Admiral Graf Bay would leave Wilhelmshaven. Captain Hans Langdorf would follow the route already previously used by U-boats, heading north just off the Norwegian coast in the northwest towards Iceland, being southeast of the island by the 24th of August. The Grash Bay could operate in different areas, the South American Cape Verde to Biscay trade route, or the South Central Atlantic Sea area, the Cape Town Cape Verde Island route, or the South Indian Ocean. On September 1st, the Admiral Grash Bay was looking to meet up with the Altmark, an auxiliary vessel near the Canary Islands. There was a bit of confusion between the two ships, as the Altmark was flying a Norwegian flag and had the name Sogne painted on either side, but after recognizing that it was the Grash Bay, the two ships would be stopped next to each other. Langsdorf would learn that the Altmark spotted the Grash Bay smoke before her mast had come into sight. The Grash Bay's chief engineer was warned to not allow this to happen again. The following day, the two ships would make their way southward, moving slowly with Altmark altering course from time to time to make it look like that they weren't with the Grash Bay, taking this time to exercise the Grash Bay's gunnery crew. The following day, the Grash Bay heard the Royal Navy orders 
to commence hostilities at once against Germany. Then orders came from Germany saying to begin commerce hostilities against the United Kingdom immediately. Further orders came later saying that the French shipping was not to be attacked at this time. By the 7th, the Grash Bay was ordered out of the operational area. In view of these orders, Langsdorff decided that together with the Altmark that they would head toward the South Atlantic, feeling that the area would be free of merchant ships and unpatrolled by warships, and the weather would be good enough for both ships to do important tasks of maintenance and fueling. By the 11th, Langsdorff ordered the cruiser to refuel and sent up the Graf Bay's reconnaissance plane as a precaution, and the plane spotted a ship, which caused quite the stir but ended up passing by uneventfully. However, as they were refueling, another ship was spotted, which turned out to be the British cruiser Cumberland. Langsdorff had picked a spot along the route the Cumberland was taking from Freetown, Sierra Leone, to the area around Rio de Janeiro. By chance, the Cumberland came within 10 miles of the Grash Bay, and even altered course towards the ship, but did not even engage or detect the German cruiser. The days would pass by pretty uneventfully, besides getting the disposition of British ships in the South Atlantic. Then, on the 26th of September, the Grash Bay received the order to, quote, commence active participation in the trade war, end quote. Over the coming days, the crew of the Grash Bay would prepare themselves for the upcoming missions. Now, it was impossible to hide their presence once the raiding began. So in order to confuse the Allied forces, they changed the name on the stern to the Admiral Shear, as well as altering other equipment and even giving the ship's crew new cap bands with the altered name on it. On the 30th of September, a British steamer, the Clement, was heading from New York to Salvador in Brazil, when at 11.15 they spotted a cruiser closing in on them. The captain expected it to be HMS Ajax, or a Brazilian cruiser. A recon plane was in the sky and flew over the Clement several times, flashing signals to the cruiser and on one of the passes, fired on the Clement. At this point, Captain Harris of the Clement realized that this ship was definitely not a friendly ship. So he ordered the confidential books to be thrown into the ocean, as to not have them fall into the hands of the oncoming German ships. Harris would then order the crew into life rafts. After having a conversation with Captain Harris, Captain Langsdorff then ordered the Clement sunk, first missing with a torpedo, and then firing on the ships with 5.9-inch guns, somewhat ineffectually. The Clement was finally taken down using the heavier guns. This happened at about 3.30. Langsdorff would treat his British prisoners with respect as long as they promised to not attempt to sabotage or spy on the German ship. After agreeing to this, Harris was offered cigars and beer and a large meal. After about two hours, the Germans encountered a Greek steamer, Papalinos, to which they sent the British captain and the other crewmen on board the Grash Bay and was then allowed to continue on its way, then later sending a signal to have the crew of the Clement saved. The Grash Bay altered course to head between Ascension Island and St. Helena. By October 1st, Langsdorff kept his plan to withdraw. After passing between the two islands on the 4th, the Grash Bay the following morning at 6.30 a.m. would alter course to the northeast after smoke had been spotted. The Grash Bay would follow the smoke and it would lead to a merchant ship, which turned out to be the British cargo ship Newton Beach. Langsdorff decided that this ship would be captured undamaged, sending over a boarding party and closing to 1,800 meters, the Grash Bay ran up a German ensign and signaled via flags to Newton Beach. After pointing the 5.9-inch guns towards the British ship, it promptly began to slow down and came to a stop. As the boarding party went over to the Newton Beach, the merchant ship would send out a very weak distress signal. It was found that the British ship was carrying maize, and within a couple hours, the Grash Bay, along with the Newton Beach, were on the move again. This is where we'll leave the Grash Bay for this part of the ship's journey in the South Atlantic. Again, I'd like to apologize for not making this a long video, but unfortunately, school takes priority.